The wiki definition of linguistic relativity holds that the structure of a language affects speaker's worldview or cognition. Popularly known as the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis, the principle is often defined to include two versions. The strong version says that language determines thought and that linguistic categories limit and determine cognitive categories, whereas the weak version says that linguistic categories and usage only influence thought and decisions. Basically, if you learn to speak another language, your consciousness will exponentially expand. That is equally true and not true. Or it's equally true and it's not only true. I think the most um, illustrative examples are given of people, Australian, Aboriginal, specified directions and measurements differently. So they think in those measurements. But you see, here's the thing. Yes, I am better at speaking in English publicly at least because certain letters are pronounced differently and I sound a little better however I am much better writing in my own language whereas expressing myself that doesn't have to do with language very much that has to do with being well read these days there is a whole bunch of discussions about race and superiority of racism and inferiority And people take very little into account the fact that where you are raised, regardless of what color, you're going to develop into a certain type of person. If you are raised in the slums of the worst, most deprived of basic human goods society, then you're not going to be extremely well-read, well-spoken, and you're not going to be employed as a speaker of the house anytime soon. But if you go to a good school... If you read a lot of books, if you love language and you love words, then you're going to be good at them. That's that's a no-brainer. In fact, I've met people. I, I wasn't looking for them because I, I hang in circles where people actually know how to express themselves. I've come across people who were so poorly read, not because they would lack an opportunity, but simply because they thought books are for losers, that they wouldn't be able to describe the most basic emotions. They wouldn't understand the difference between being anxious or being scared, the difference between being worried or being tired. The more you know, you can't go wrong. There's no such thing as too much knowledge. And if someone asks you, why would you be interested in that? Simple answer is, I'm interested in everything. This is where the Safir Worth hypothesis falls short. It doesn't It doesn't work for language alone. It works for absolutely everything, any kind of knowledge you acquire. I want to give you an example, which is really simple. It's almost simplistic, but it is absolutely incorrect. I spend most of my life photographing with a 50mm lens because I found it very easy to travel with. I, uh, portraits are really well done with it. And the only time I used a wider lens was to photograph landscape when I was traveling. It's easy to do street with it or it's versatile so it's practical on a field if you have to think fast and on your feet and I considered very much buying a a wide lens a street lens so that um, I wouldn't look so imposing because it's smaller and I like street photography very much but for some reason I opted for buying a macro I don't really remember what led me to buying a macro I just it's a hundred millimeters so it's also good for for portraits when you're doing shyer people who don't really like you to come that close as a 50 millimeter those are the three lenses that i now possess when you put a macro lens on your camera you start seeing patterns and textures and details unlike you wouldn't believe my doggy walking friend has done the exact same she has focused on macro photography on dew drops and insects and plant life and for a little while because i suffered from sort of post-traumatic stress disorder regarding photography and I still haven't fully recovered and taken back the reins of my portraiture I followed her a little bit I asked permission to borrow her inspiration a little and and I I photographed things I've never photographed before and the things these things I've never noticed before or cared about before I'm blessed living in an environment where there is a cornucopia of, of beautiful things so to forget what I've learned It would take for a whole patch of my consciousness to be eradicated. Every new skill you learn 
expands your consciousness. You start to think in the terms of that new consciousness. Every time you travel to a country that is much like your own, you're going to expand your consciousness. Every person you meet on an intimate level, it's going to change you completely. Even getting a new pet or committing to something, something like writing a book or climbing a mountain, you are going to be forever changed. Some could say bettered, but I prefer changed. Allowing a passionate pursuit to consume you will take you places you didn't think you dared go. And there are so many things to commit to. Language just happens to be one of the most beautiful ones. Pick one.